Hello and welcome along to another video where I'm going to talk about wiring and 12 volt systems, 230 volt systems in our camper van. This video is going to be aimed at really if somebody wants to spend a lot of time off grid, so it's going to be perfect for wiring your camper van to go off grid, your motorhome, your RV, or even maybe a cabin in the woods. Uh, this is quite an advanced system, so if you want the basic 12 volt wiring system, uh, there's going to be a link in the description down below. Uh, there's also going to be links to my other videos as well, where I go into more detail than I am in this video. Have, say, for example, uh, individually wiring uh, solar panels. That's in a video down there, as is uh, setting up and installing a solar controller. Um, again, a battery to battery charger. Um, there's also an inverter guide as well, choosing the right inverter and wiring it in there. There's guides to what correctly sizing your uh, cables and fuses. Uh, there's guides to correctly choosing your solar setup, what's the best solar panels, or how to correctly wire solar panels. Uh, so please do check the video description down below to all the other videos that have far more detailed um, information about the individual things I'm going to talk about. In this video, this is our experience of living in the van for a year totally off-grid. Um, I say this is quite an advanced one because once you understand what we charge and what we power in this van, it's pretty much just like a house, but on wheels. Um, we don't want for anything, and we charge just about anything you could imagine. So let's go over that first. What do we actually uh, power in this van? Through 12 volt and 230 volts. So we've got um, a couple of laptops. We make videos all the time. We work remotely. Uh, we've got eight cameras, uh, mobile phones, tablets. And uh, we've got security systems inside and outside the van. We've got an speaker um we watch tv at night two 12 volt compressor fridges uh, a diesel night heater we've also got like say a three kilowatt pure sine wave inverter which charges an espresso coffee maker which gets used an awful lot during the day um, hair dryer hair straighteners and two e-bikes as well so those are the types of things that we power through our electrical system pretty much on a daily basis as well, consuming on average around about 90 amp hours of power. Um, I mean, you've seen where we go in our van, you've seen the videos and the content we put out so that you can pretty much see that, you know, I'm not making this up. This is real life experience from us traveling around in our van, telling you about everything that works. This isn't someone sat on a forum saying, you need to do this and you need to do that. Um, we are giving it from our experience of at least 12 months in this van anyway um, and obviously in the other van before it as well so now you know what we use let's try and explain a little bit more how we put the system together um, so the first thing to talk about obviously we'll start off with our batteries and we use two 100 amp hour lithium batteries now i can just imagine why you're all shouting at the screen right now uh, why have you only got uh, want two 100s or why have you got two and not one big battery uh, why don't you put more batteries in there and things like that so let me explain first of all uh, we've got quite a small area in our motorhome um, for that kind of installation and i don't want to install my batteries elsewhere and have to run huge cables the length of the van to deliver the power where it's needed so i wanted a nice neat installation uh, I went for two batteries over one battery because two batteries gives you redundancy should that one battery fail or has a some sort of fault in a way um, that you've still got the other battery you can depend on. And all you've got to do is adjust your uh, usage of your power uh, and then obviously you can wait until you can replace the faulty battery and then you're back up to normal sort of uh, conditions again. Whereas if you had one battery, you would be dead in the water if that failed or had a fault. Um, and the other reason why we've only got a combined 200 amp hours of battery and not say 500 amp hours of battery is because, well, we need to charge them. <laughs> it's all right taking all that power and thinking, oh yeah, I can go off grid for two weeks and it doesn't matter if it rains every day and I don't start the engine and I don't hook up. But you've got to put that power back in those batteries. Um, so I've gone for a smaller battery bank, which gives us, you know, between sort of maybe three and three days and you know three weeks depending on the weather actually but a minimum of three days off grid um i basically decided that that's the right setup because i can recharge those batteries uh, from solar 
um, with our solar setup um, or from B2B, um, usually within a few hours. Um, in the B2B side, I can charge it within two hours. Uh, with the solar system, um, yeah, it depends on what sort of solar we get in, but usually within a day, I can recharge it. Or certainly if it's a really nice day, uh, we wouldn't deplete the batteries that much and the solar would give us an awful lot of charge. Now, if we describe this in kind of like basic terms, you have your batteries, your positive cables go to a way of distributing your positive. In this case, a high amp positive bus bar. And then your negatives are distributed in my case by a BMV 712, which allows me to monitor my um, incoming and outgoing um, loads on my system. And because I don't have too many negatives, um, then that is my negative bus bar. So I've got two identical length negative cables that go to the battery side of the bus bar. And then all my loads come off this side. And basically it's just two cables uh, for the high amp load. Uh, that cable there goes down to my inverter. We'll talk about that in a minute. And this one goes up there to the fuse box, where as you can see, I'm utilizing the negative uh, bus bar for low amp uh, devices on there. So in terms of wiring your batteries up, um, if you've got one or two batteries, this is the way that I would suggest to wire it up. Um, basically you want your negative and positive cables to be identical length. So they go to like a negative bus bar and a positive bus bar, but they're the same length. Certainly if you're connecting two batteries together, make sure that the positive cables are the same length going to the bus bar and the negative cables are the same length going to the bus bar. And then from my bus bar, I'm feeding into the fuse box with that small uh, six mil cable there. Uh, and that is just so that um, I can feed in small low devices, like say like USB and 12 volt sockets. My solar controller feeds into the bus bar. Like I say, the Germans have put in um, that cable there for the solar panel cables. This cable, comes from the solar controller. Its positive wire is left in place and that goes into your first panel in there. The negative wire from the first panel is then split and then the negative wire of the first panel joins into the positive wire of your second panel. Then the second panel's negative wire, which is the return back out, joins the return negative wire of the original cable. So if you think electricity is flowing this way into that cable, into that panel, flows back out into this cable, into that panel, flows back out through this cable and then back down to the solar controller, which ultimately charges your battery. So it's that simple. So they just did a bit different to color code in there. Uh, my negatives are going there, which ultimately goes down to my uh, BMB 712 and the positive goes through that breaker and then onto the bus bar. Same again with the B2B. The B2B is fed from the battery, that cable, uh, through the breaker, isolator, into the system, and then back out of the system, it goes positive cable all the way up there to that little breaker, and then that little breaker goes into the positive bus bar. And then the negative that comes out of here goes to my negative bus bar there. Um, I've got a negative and positive coming to my B2B from the starter battery um, and that is because um, it's a isolated system so that's the best way to do it. Now from here obviously I've got 240 volts like I say I've got two cables the negative cable there and the positive cable there that run down through and through the van and underneath my driver's seat I've got a three kilowatt inverter which I've got a remote switch for up on my switch panel and then you run that blue cable goes all the way to the back of the van where we've got an automatic switch over which gives priority to hook up or if there's no hook up then the inverter comes on and powers all the van through that circuit there my van's got an existing electro block uh, 12 volt system which powers things like water pumps uh, the lights um, other things like the fridge and things like that um, so that's why my system here might not be too complicated because this is actually a standalone system connecting back to the original one and that black wire there connects back to the original system. So if I want to disconnect either battery, I can just trip it and that'll disconnect either battery if I've got a fault with it or something like that. Um, 
and on that side then obviously then I can disconnect fuses and things like that. On those I can trip them as well if I want to disconnect those temporarily and obviously if I want to stop the B2B from charging I can just trip that down there as well. So as far as solar power we've got two panels up on the roof, um, a 360 watt panel and a 100 watt panel and they're wired in series to our 30 amp controller and on a really sunny good day close to the equator or in summer in the UK, uh, we can get uh, just over a kilowatt hour, which is probably close to-ish 90 amp hours of power. So with a really good sunny day, that's gonna completely cover our power needs, almost to the point of um, with the sun shining as much as it possibly can, we don't really deplete anything out of our batteries. Or well, say for example, if it was a really cloudy day one day and the batteries are depleted, the next day it's a nice sunny day, the batteries are fully charged. And if it's not sunny, then obviously we've got the B2B charger. Our van's actually got an inbuilt electro block um, wiring system with a hookup charger and the B2B charger in there, 20 amp. I've added an additional Victron 30 amp B2B. So when we start the engine and go for a drive or leave it on tickover, we're getting up to 50 amps of charge into the batteries, which obviously is gonna charge our batteries up pretty quick. On average, we can take it from 80 amp hours of used um, capacity out of the battery to being 100% charged in just over an hour. Okay, so that's temporarily just connected up now while I do everything else. I just want to verify that this works and we get loads of power out of it. There we go, so that's both 50 amps. There we go, spot on. Um, so yes, as I promised, here is um, Tom's schematic overview of our van's wiring system. Something that I don't like to do that often. Uh, Tom loves that and I thought I'd ask Tom to do it so that you guys could see the work that he puts out there as well. So it's all right for me to say, oh yeah, go contact Tom, he'll help you out. But if you can see the, the attention to detail he puts in there and the type of information he's gonna send you to help you with your install as well. So well worth it. Thanks, John and Mandy. Hey folks, my name's Tom and I'm the owner of Tinywood Electrics. We are an electrical specialist company specializing in off-grid setups. So whether that is in a van, a camper van, a motorhome or a boat, if you're looking for a one-stop shop for all things electrical, everything down from system design and system layout to supplying your system um, and all the way through until providing you with a detailed schematic to really help aid you with the install process. Uh, feel free to get in touch. We have a community WhatsApp where you can post all of your questions and queries and get instantaneous answers from either myself or other folks that have experienced the same issues in the past. Uh, I'm sure John and Mandy will put all of the details in the description below, but you can find us over on Instagram at Tiny Build Electrics. Thank you again, John and Mandy. Uh, speak soon and all the best. Take care. Cheers, mate. Uh, all the links and everything from Tom down below as well, how to get hold of him. Because if you're not that comfortable with all this kind of DIY work, Tom can help you out. So yeah, breakdown of the costs are roughly 1,600 pounds for the batteries. Um, for the B2B 30 amp and solar controller 30 amp, they're about uh, 250 each. Uh, the BMV 712, which we use to monitor the power is about 180. Uh, solar panels, if you were to buy our new one and the original one together, they'd be about £400. Uh, 12 volt 30 amp charger as well would be around about £50 if you were to hook one of those up yourself. Obviously, ours came with the van. Uh, breakers, fuses and bus bars combined, um, including all the ancillary devices like uh, fuse um, holders, um, extra little lugs and things like that. Um, that was uh, 350 for that total. Uh, wires, uh, fuse boxes, and crimps, uh, and all the little connectors like the MC4 connectors and things like that for the solar panel and everything, uh, that was about 150 pounds. Uh, the three kilowatt inverter, 300 pounds. Um, the 230 volt auto switch, 65 pounds. Um, things like USB sockets, 12 volt sockets, uh, the lighting bits, um, LED lights, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that came in about £65. Um, and then we've got um, tools, you know, something like the, um, the hydraulic crimping tool, um, all the other bits and bobs that you just don't have lying around, you know, little bits of things that you need. Say, for example, the, um, the bars and straps and everything to strap the batteries down, all that kind of stuff. Um, little little things that I can't even think of now, but I obviously needed to buy at the time. Uh, that came to one sixty five. So the total is three seven six five, which sounds a lot, 
but like I say, this is our full-time home. Uh, we need it to be perfectly functional as much as possible. Uh, we need it to deliver everything to make our life as comfortable as it is. Um, to charge everything we need to not only work but obviously make our videos to go out there and enjoy ourselves all that kind of stuff uh, and that works fantastic for us um, we have no complaints everything does work you know touch word uh, brilliantly right so if you have got any questions uh, about this obviously please do ask in the comment section down below but please do bear in mind all the other videos that are linked in the video description uh, things like, like I say, the original 12 volt wiring guide, which is quite basic, but it'll give you an idea of how everything works. Individual components like, like I say, the B2B wiring, the solar controller wiring, solar panel installation, um, how to correctly size for an inverter, wiring multiple batteries together, uh, the auto switch over, how to correctly size your um, solar system, solar system uh, how to correctly choose the correct length and cable size for your wiring cables and things like that they're all linked all down with there in the video description so hopefully that should give you everything you need and hopefully that's been a good walkthrough of our system so you now know what our off-grid uh, capability is hope it's helped you see a few things maybe that you need to work on in your setup or if you are building a van hopefully you've been able to understand a little bit more about the thought processes and needs and requirements and things like that uh, but like i say if you've got any other uh, questions please do ask in the comment section down below and yeah i'll catch you on the next video take care then bye